Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 596 days, Ukraine defends itself against the forces of the Russian invasion. The International Olympic Committee suspended the Russian Olympic Committee due to their inclusion of the so-called sports organizations located in the occupied territories of Donetsk, Lugansk, Kherson and Zaporizhia oblasts of Ukraine, reports TSN. According to the IOC, this decision breaches the Olympic Charter because it violates the territorial integrity of the National Olympic Committee of Ukraine. At the same time, the IOC reserves the right to decide on the participation of individual neutral athletes with a Russian passport in the Olympic Games in Paris in 2024 and the Winter Olympic Games in Milan-Cortana in 2026 at the appropriate time. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky welcomed this decision and pointed out that Russia thinks they can use sports and the Olympic movement as a weapon that will definitely not work. On 10th of October, the Union of European Football Associations, UEFA, abandoned its decision to allow Russian under-17 football teams to participate in international tournaments. <music> President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky, in his evening video address, informed that Ukraine aims to produce its own weapons, equipment and ammunition for the armed forces. Everything from missiles and drones to armored vehicles and ammunition of the required caliber. The head of state hosted a meeting of the staff at which the Minister of Strategic Industries has already presented reports on several defense production projects in segments of armored vehicles, missiles and anti-tank missiles. According to Zelensky, another immediate priority is to digitalize the entire supply, accounting for the defense forces. Quote, digitalization will provide a clear understanding of how our warriors are being supplied and where deficits are occurring and how they are being filed. This is crucial so that we can promptly show every one of our partners information about each unit of weaponry supplied, said the president. We would really appreciate if you could recommend us to your friends and family as well as share information on social media. This way more people would learn about the podcast and truth about Russia's invasion. US President Joe Biden plans to ask Congress for more money for military aid to Israel and Ukraine, reports Ukrainska Pravda. It is expected that the request will be submitted in a single bill. According to Reuters, some Republicans have said they will oppose efforts to link aid to Israel with aid to Ukraine. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin said that the U.S. will be able to provide all necessary military assistance to Israel and Ukraine at the same time. Meanwhile, the number of Ukrainians who died during the escalation of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has increased to seven people. According to spokesman of the Ukrainian Foreign Ministry Oleg Nikolenko, the consuls have established their personal data and maintaining contact with families. Measures have been taken to repatriate their bodies. Nine Ukrainians were injured. Nikolenko also said that more than a thousand Ukrainians have asked for help in leaving Israel. The spokesman of the Ukrainian foreign ministry said that the first evacuation flight to Romania is scheduled for 14th of October. Additionally, about 200 Ukrainians have expressed their desire to evacuate from the Gaza Strip, but leaving is currently impossible due to the lack of security. Chief of Ukraine's Defense Intelligence Kirill Obudano believes that Russia can afford to fight without particular problems until 2025, although there will be enough equipment until 2026 and human resources for even longer. In an interview with Ukrainska Pravda, Budano said that this assumption is based on the economic assessment. Quote, Another matter is whether the Russian Federation is ready to go to the edge to fight to the last one, asked the chief of intelligence. In fact, only conscripts are fighting for them, they feel a lack of ammunition, a lack of weapons, he added. Thank you for listening to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast. We are a commercial initiative of just two people and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the app, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we are getting better. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.